Good morning, everyone. Oh, I caught you off guard, didn't I? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. good morning. It is good to see you this morning as we begin our time of worship together in this place and online. Welcome to any guests in particular that may be worshiping with us for the first time this morning. Glad that you are here. We do hope that if we don't have your contact information, that you will share that with us, uh, either here in the sanctuary, on your connection card, write that down, or online, you can get connection cards online, and let us know that you're worshiping with us. Also a great way, as usual, to share prayer requests. We're continuing our sermon series today, uh, Soaring with Our Strengths. We have been thinking the last few weeks about uh, the strength of our missions, that we are a mission-minded congregation. Uh, last week, we claimed our intentional inclusivity and celebrated the third anniversary of the fact that we are a reconciling ministry congregation. We also celebrated the strength of our music ministry, uh, and had a wonderful organ concert. Today, we are celebrating on this Labor Day weekend, seem like a perfect connect, uh, the power of our people, of our congregation, of each and every one of you and beyond. And so that is where we are headed. We actually have a couple of scripture lessons going to be reading in a little bit from the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, I can't remember if I said this or not, but if I didn't, and you're not sure who I am, Pastor Beth, um, it is so good always um, to claim the fact that God has called me to be the pastor here, one of them, uh, of this amazing congregation. If you are not on our weekly welcome email list, I hope that you will get on it. It really is the best way to get information about what's happening. Uh, you can send us an email at contact at fumcgnv.org. And if you like to have that weekly welcome in a paper uh, copy, you can get that at the welcome table as you leave today. We have paper copies of that uh, every week. We are going to be starting an exploring membership class uh, Sunday, September 18th from 9 to 10. Uh, we will be meeting over in Bell Hall. I invite you uh, to come and check in with me about that if you have any questions or you can email me as well. This is a wonderful class that uh, is for three sessions and then those that are ready will join on October 9th. So as we celebrate our people power, uh, it truly is a wonderful thing to think about uh, adding new folks to the fold. As we have our worship today, I hope that you will feel the true presence of Christ within you, not so that each of us might keep it for ourselves only, but that so we might share it with a world that needs love so very much. We have that power. Let's use it, people. Let's be in worship.
morning. <laughs> My name is Cheryl Resch, and I'm happy to serve as the liturgist in worship today. Please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Your responses are in bold. Creator God, divine artist, you fashioned the universe with skill and beauty. We, we praise you. you. Jesus, the builder, has shaped our hearts with loving hands and a steady eye. We, we thank you. Holy Spirit, breath of new creation, you continually fashion us anew. We, we worship you. you. We, we open our hearts to you. We, we surrender ourselves to your shaping hands. Our opening hymn is from the Red Methodist Hymnal number 398, Jesus Calls Us. Let's sing together. Thank you. this morning's affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We come now to the time in our service when we are reminded of the importance of our tithes and our offerings. If you have brought a gift with you here and you are in the sanctuary this morning, I invite you to leave that in one of the black boxes in the narthex, of course. There are also ways to give online and to share your gifts through the mail. Uh, we are again so grateful for the ways that your financial faithfulness helps us. Um, and how it helps our community to reach out and to share the love and light of Christ. Speaking of the love and light of Christ, we do have a celebration uh, 
to lift up today, and that is Pastor Harold's 90th birthday is coming up next Thursday. Happy birthday, Pastor Harold. And these beautiful flowers were given in celebration uh, of that wonderful event by Pastor Harold's wife, Kathy. Um, and if you uh, are available next Saturday from 10 until 2, uh, the Hendersons are hosting an open house uh, for Pastor Harold's big day. Uh, you can find information about that in the weekly welcome, um, or please call the church office. We can make sure that you have the address, um, and uh, they would just love for you to stop by. Uh, some lunch and refreshments will be served, and it'll just be a nice time to visit um, and uh, to celebrate a really, really special, special person. Uh, speaking of special people, we also have some beautiful yellow roses on the altar today uh, in memory of what would have been Fred Sale's 90th birthday. And so, Anne, we love you, uh, and we celebrate Fred um, and the life in Christ that he lives now. Uh, it is a birthday uh, that we will all experience in the fullness of our time and we are grateful for that. Our mission moment today, our second mile giving for missions, is for our community outreach ministry. And I want to share with you uh, a story, as I do uh, usually every month, uh, about a particular uh, case that we were able to help through the community outreach ministry. Uh, and so... Uh, here we go. Uh, as we had said before, the uh, community outreach ministry continues to recover from COVID. We are helping about half the number of people that we helped pre-COVID, but we are fairly uh, quickly approaching a fuller number. Uh, in August, we helped 19 people with 24 additional family members compared to 10 last month. So growing, growing. Uh, one of the most worthwhile cases we worked on was a young man who had just been released from a crisis stabilization unit here in town. While he was there for several months recovering from substance abuse and mental health issues, his lot rent and utilities continued. So he was way behind on both. He asked us for help with the lot rent. He was a hardworking man with a full-time job as a restaurant cook. He has part-time custody of his two children and a good relationship with his ex-wife. She was the one he asked to hold his money until he was able to pay back the rent, and he was able to save $1,200. We added 432. It is likely this man would have sunk back into substance abuse and anxiety had we not been able to help him. By the way, he was referred to us by the lady we call the Good Samaritan. She works in the same restaurant. Thank you so much for helping us to reach out to, her, to our community and to be Good Samaritans ourselves. So if you'd like to make a special gift to Community Outreach Ministry to come, we invite you to do that today. Just make sure you make a note on how, whichever way that you give. And now let's, let's celebrate giving and the gifts with music. Have 
Good morning, friends. As, as you will have gathered, I'm Pastor Harold. And if you don't believe that I'll be 90 on Thursday, neither do I. <laughs> if you want to know the secret, don't ask me. <laughs> friends, it is time to pray. And it's always good to set aside time to pray, to be still, and to know that God is God. And we're going to sing our call to prayer. Holy, holy, ho my heart, my heart adores you, first in English and then in Spanish. We'll remain seated. Our scripture sentences for our prayer time this morning are from the 73rd Psalm, and the psalmist is speaking to God. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth, earth that I desire other than you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And our prayer concerns this morning. Two weeks ago, we were thinking about the flooding in Kansas and Appalachia. That is still a problem, of course. But now the city of Dallas has been added to that. And even worse than both of those, the country of Pakistan, which is one third underwater. And already the loss of life has totaled 1,100. We pray for all of the victims of those situations and for the UN agencies and the governments and the voluntary agencies and the heroes that just show up out of nowhere and help. We pray for all of them that needs will be met adequately. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And by contrast with that, of course, there is no water in the city of Jackson, Mississippi, and they're depending on bottled water that is carried in. 
We pray for that situation that it will soon be resolved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And while that's happening, there are devastating fires in Northern California that have destroyed a lot of property. I don't think there are any loss of lives recorded yet, and we hope that there won't be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our community outreach ministry, which is the subject of our special giving today, for those who make that ministry possible by their presence here and by their giving and support. And we pray for all of the people who come needing help and hopefully receiving it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Worship is at the core and especially the sacrament of Holy Communion in worship is at the core of the life of any community of faith or faith family, as we sometimes like to say. And we will share in the sacrament of Holy Communion later in the service to nourish our lives and to express our deep, deep gratitude to the one who loved us and gave himself for us. But the church doesn't only operate on Sundays. It's a seven day enterprise, the church. Uh, maybe 24 hours a day, seven days a week would be a better way to say it. But there's a lot happening in the life of this church during the week. I noticed, for example, that on our website there are 10 growth groups that meet each week uh, listed. But there are many, many other groups that would not be categorised as growth groups, but are very important uh, to the life of the ministry of a church, where we can be in smaller groupings and grow together in our knowledge and love of God and in our service of God. And so we pray for that ministry that goes on all the time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. One of the special things that's going to be happening this week is that there will be a requiem listening party here in the sanctuary before choir rehearsal on Wednesday night. That is at 6.30. If you want to hear parts of the requiem that have already been written, then this is your opportunity to get a foretaste of what's in the future for us in that marvellous piece of music that is being created by Heather Sorensen. It will be previewed for the first time anywhere here in the sanctuary next year. And after it's been previewed here, there will be a New York preview, they're calling it, and our choir will be involved in that. So there's a lot going to happen. But let's pray about this ministry, that this will not just be um, a spectacular piece of music or a new piece of music, but it will be a message of God that goes out from us into a very wide world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I have 17 uh, unspoken requests this morning, and you will have others, folks about whom you are concerned and who need our prayers. And I hope that as we observe a period of silence in which I will read silently all of the names that I have here, you will likewise mention silently in the presence of God those concerns about which you are aware. And then at the end of it, we'll all pray for everyone. Let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As I approach my 90th birthday, I've thought a little bit about that, but I came across a prayer during the week that seemed as though it were written for me. It wasn't. It was actually uh, written by an anonymous nun in the 17th century a nun who had a lot of self-awareness, obviously, but didn't take herself too seriously. And even, I think, 
had a good sense of humour. I'm going to pray that prayer uh, this morning as mine. And if you want to identify with it anywhere on the way through, please feel free. Let us pray. Lord, you know me better than I know myself, that I am growing older and will someday be old. Keep me from the fatal habit of thinking that I must say something on every subject and every occasion. Release me from craving to straighten out everybody else's affairs. Make me thoughtful but not moody, helpful but not bossy. With my vast store of wisdom, it seems a pity not to use it all. You know, O oh Lord, that I want a few friends at the end. Seal my lips on my aches and pains, for love of rehearsing them will become sweeter as the years go by. Teach me the glorious lesson that occasionally I may be wrong. Keep me reasonably sweet. A sour old person is one of the crowning works of the devil. Give me the ability to see good things in unexpected places and talents in unexpected people. And give me, O oh Lord, the grace to tell them so. And we offer this prayer in the name and for the sake of our Son and your your Son and our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And this is the time when we give a special welcome to the children who are in our congregation, either here or online. And we invite the ones who are here to gather at the front as Pastor Beth brings you a special message today. And while all that's happening, we're going to remain seated and sing where children belong. Goodness gracious, yes, I did. I brought a picture of the church with me today. Um, but what's even more important, hey, Jenna, come on down. What's even more important than the building in the background is who are all these people? Everybody, 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 at least at the time that this picture was taken. And we are talking today about the power that we have as people here in the church and in our community and in the whole world we can make a difference because we have jesus in our hearts and we follow jesus and jesus shows us how to do that and one of the things that it says in our scripture passage today is that that jesus will never leave us that jesus is going to be with us always even till the very end of the age and so when this picture was taken uh it was taken actually before i became the pastor of this church this picture was taken before some of you were even born and yet you're here right um, it probably was, yes, it was, because I've been here six years, um, and this was before me. I know, I know, it's a, it, there was stuff, there was life before me here. I know. What? <laughs> but that's the thing that we have to remember when we think about the power of people, is that God continues to add new people um, to the body, 
not only to our congregation, but to congregations all over the world. And it's really pretty amazing uh, that God's church will never end because each and every one of us becomes part of it. And then the next person, and the next person, and the next person, and all of us bring our own gifts, right? Yeah, I mean, we've even got some extra dolls today. Look at all these dolls. Amani's got her doll back there, and we've got, we've got all kinds of stuff. This is uh, Encanto, right? Encanto right over here? That's what I thought. I know, I know. We can count the dolls. We can, we can. So I hope that that's something that you will remember when you see pictures like this of all of these people, that even though you're not in the picture, you are a part of it. You are a part of this congregation. And there are a lot of other people that are going to be coming um, and that will be part of it as well. Uh, and Jesus wants that for us because he doesn't ever want us to be alone. We don't have to do anything by ourselves. Imani? That's true. If you wanted to be in the picture, Imani said we could cut out everybody's little head and like put it in there. Um, uh, that, 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 that could work. And there's also Photoshop. There's, there's all kinds of things we can do these days. But that's the thing, we don't have to because we know. We know that there are other pictures that are coming that we will get to be a part of because Jesus keeps building his family through each and every one of us. Sadie? The pastor before me was named Pastor Sarah, Pastor Sarah McKinley, uh, and the pastor before her was Pastor Harold. Uh, so I'm telling you, it is a wonderful line, and the next person after me, and the next person, and the next person, we all are important and have things to give, and so that's what we celebrate today. And Charlotte, did you say that you liked, you liked my stole? Is that what you were saying? Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for these children that are with us today, for those that have been in this congregation and have grown up. Uh, we thank you for them as well, and for those who are to come. God, we ask that we will do everything that we can to be agents of love in the world, not because we want to look good, but because we want to make you look good. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, everybody. You can go with Miss Lynette if you would like. Yes, Sadie? If you want to make everyone else look good, I would say it's Definitely not. Sadie asked if I wanted to make everybody else look good, was I a makeup artist? No, 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 not even a little, not even a little. So our scripture lessons today, as I mentioned, uh, do come from the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, and I'm going to be reading two today, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 22, uh, and then skipping over to Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. So starting with Matthew 4, Jesus calls the first disciples. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him, as he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. And then from Matthew 28, the commissioning of the disciples. 
Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. So in the scripture passages we just read, we see the power that Jesus gives people, ordinary people, like you and like me, and we have power to make disciples. Jesus appears to the twelve for the first time since his resurrection in these last four verses of the Gospel of Matthew, that the second piece of scripture that I read, and, and his words, known throughout Christian history as the Great Commission, are spoken as instructions, instructing those who are present to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. An extremely important directive that reminded me as the college football season begins of Nike's famous slogan, just do it. Well, congratulations, by the way, Gators. Hard what? Yes, yes, I know, I know. I actually, I actually told my husband last night as we were watching the game, I really hope they win, because then everybody will be in a good mood tomorrow. Uh, and, and you may have noticed that I'm actually wearing garnet and gold because my Knolls are playing tonight. Um, and I, I know, I see LSU people in the back going like this. I know, I know who you are. I know who you are. <laughs> Just do it. But this morning, we've got to put the brakes on a little bit before we can just do it and make disciples of all nations, we have to just be it. We have to just be it. We have to be disciples, both individually and as a community of faith. We are called to be living representatives of Christ first. And it is in this being that others experience God's attributes in us and through us. No doubt, this just be it calling in regards to discipleship, let's just say that it's a toughie. You never know who's watching or who's listening that might be influenced. I've told this little story before, but it's one of my favorites. It tells about a wife who invited some people to dinner, and at the table, she turned to her six-year-old daughter and said, Would you like to say the blessing? But I don't know what to say, said the little girl. Just say what you hear mommy say, the woman said. And the daughter then bowed her head and said, Why on earth, Lord, did I invite all these people to dinner? <laughs> not only is it not easy, but it is next to impossible to get this disciple thing of mercy, justice, grace, and love right 100% of the time. The next little story has the 12 disciples themselves being less than example worthy. Hear this one. Jesus took his disciples up a mountain 
and gathered them around him. And he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed is the meek. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those who search for justice. Blessed are you when you are persecuted. Blessed are you when you suffer. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward is great in heaven. Then Simon Peter said, Are we supposed to know all of this? Then Andrew said, Do we have to write this down? And James said, well, we have a test on this. And Matthew said, I don't have a pencil or paper. And John said, the other disciples didn't have to learn this. And Judas says, what does this have to do with real life anyway? Then one of the Pharisees asked to see Jesus' lesson plan and inquired of Jesus, where is your anticipatory set and your objectives in the cognitive domain. And then, Jesus wept. (laughs) I'm guessing that you teachers can relate out there to this little anecdote better than any of us. There you are. You are caught up in a moment of great inspiration, pouring out wisdom that is bound to expand the horizons and, dare we say, change the lives of your students. You speak with passion and excitement and enthusiasm, and then you wait to hear the lively discussion that's going to follow. And then instead of a lively discussion, the whiny, do we have to, chorus commences. What a letdown. But isn't this do we have to ness a part of our human nature that is by no means limited to the walls of a classroom? We want the quick fix. We want more for less. You may have heard the tale about W.C. Fields, who was a lot like the drunken, rascally character that he played in the movies. When he was on his deathbed, a friend came to visit and was surprised that he was reading the Bible. And the friend asked, what are you doing reading the Bible? Are you looking for answers? No, Fields answered, I'm looking for loopholes. So what does this mean? What does this mean? When we are in the disciple-making business, being a disciple itself is hard work. And there is none of us that even though it's hard, there are none of us that are off the hook. Because there is a voice inside of us, I like to call the Holy Spirit, that says, yes, the truth is it's going to be hard. But then going back to that just do it Nike, how about no pain, no gain? Anything worth doing is worth doing well And usually, it's kind of hard. There are no excuses. And there are no loopholes. It's all about making it happen through the Jesus power that is with us always. The Jesus that has promised to never leave us nor forsake us helping us to just be the disciples, to just be it. Not perfectly, but purposefully and passionately. As we continue to journey together in the coming days, in the coming months and years, doing our best to build on these strengths that God has given to us by listening to who God is calling us to be, where God's calling us to go as a congregation. 
I pray that these reflections might be nourishment to your souls as is this gift that we will partake together in a few moments of Holy Communion. To help us to just be it. Discipleship living. Bringing others to know God. The God of mercy and justice and peace and joy and love. It's not about have to. At least I pray that it's not about have to. I pray that for each and every one of us, it is about want to. We love God because God first loved us. We love God because God first loved us. I'll end with a wonderful poem. I ended with a poem last week. You got another one this week. This one is by Sam Levinson, entitled Time-Tested Beauty Tips. I see a few of you nodding your heads. You know this one. It was one of Audrey Hepburn's favorites, and it was read at her funeral. For attractive lips speak words of kindness. For lovely eyes seek out the good in people. For a slim figure share your food with the hungry. For beautiful hair, let a child run her fingers through it once a day. For poise, walk with the knowledge that you are never alone. People, even more than things, have to be restored, renewed, revived, reclaimed, and redeemed. Never throw out anyone. Remember, if you ever need a helping hand, you will find one at the end of each arm. As you grow older, you will discover that you have two hands, one for helping yourself and one for helping others. Sounds like Sam and Audrey knew a thing or two about real beauty. And as followers of Jesus Christ, so do we. Let's just be disciples. Let's claim the power that we have as people of God who have been brought together in this time and in this place so that the kingdom of God will be built. And more disciples will be made of all nations for God's glory. And all God's people said, amen. For those who are joining us online, I hope if you have not already, that you will get out some bread and some juice or whatever elements are available to you so that you may celebrate this holy meal as well. Jesus sat around a table with his friends And he took bread, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup. And he lifted it up, and he asked God to bless it, and he said, drink from this all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we ask that you fall afresh upon these gifts of bread and cup, Make them be for us truly the body and blood of Christ, so that we might be redeemed by his grace and share the message of his good news with the world. We come to this table today with repentant hearts, O God. Forgive us for those things that we have done that we should not have. 
and for those things that we have left undone that you have called us to, we fall into your arms of mercy and are thankful that truly we are forgiven. We pray that this holy meal might make us one with you, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until in the fullness of time we feast at your heavenly banquet. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite those who are helping to serve to come forward now. We will have a station in the middle um, that will have individually wrapped communion, if that is something that would be helpful to you, as well as gluten-free communion. Uh, we also have our two stations on either side, um, and you are invited to come to one of those. And Oh, you're fine. And then... Once you receive uh, the juice, you can uh, receive that here, and then there are garbage cans on your way back to your seat. And if you need us to bring communion to you, just let one of the ushers know, uh, and we will certainly do that. The table is almost ready. Won't you come? Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together.
Let us pray. Loving Lord, thank you for these gifts that in a mysterious but marvelous way give us a power that passes all of our understanding. We pray that that power might give us the strength to just be disciples. Again, not for our glory, but for yours. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, and we will sing our closing hymn together, We've a Story to Tell to the Nations. And a special thank you today. Hey, Charlotte, turn around for me. This was Charlotte's first day as an acolyte, right? Great job, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. These candles are tall, folks. Awesome. Just one more example of the gift that God has given us in our people. It doesn't matter our age. What matters is our willingness to serve. And we all have different ways that we can do that. And so as we go from this place, please receive this blessing. And also, I forgot to mention, thank you to Stephanie Smith, who is our guest organist today, who is sharing her gifts with us. 
she will be sharing our postlude. If following the uh, draw the circle wide, if you would like to sit back down for the postlude, you're welcome to do that, or you're welcome to make your way out into the courtyard for refreshments. And now receive this benediction. May the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now as we conclude our service of worship here and continue our service of worship in the world. said.